Hi, and welcome to the second video in series about optimization inside UFN. In this video, I want to explain modular assets, assets reusability in general, and why you need to care about it. So let's start with diving into prefabs we have from Fortnite. And this is exactly what you want to do when you're working on a larger project. So this is a perfect example because Epix knows what they're doing. Let's load one of the prefabs. Yeah, this castle. And what I see from the people when they're grabbing some meshes, like for example, this castle, they're grabbing from internet, let's say Sketchfab, and they're trying to drop it into the UFN map as a one static mesh. And this is really, really, really bad thing. So first of all, if you want to keep details, as you can see in here, we have pretty a lot of details, right? All these tiles, edges. And if you want to keep all these details, because it's a huge size, right? Your mesh would be, I don't know, probably like a few hundred thousand triangles at least. And from my previous videos, I was explaining that you can't go beyond 55,000 triangles around that. Otherwise, your fan will try during the import, will try to optimize it. So you need to split into parts. And another really bad thing, it's basically on the GPU side, when you're rendering, it only renders what it sees. So there are two cooling methods. Cooling, it means it removes whatever you don't need. So there are frost and cooling, and there is occlusion cooling. So frost and cooling, it's basically what camera sees. What's beyond camera, it, it basically gets scrubbed. So CPU removes that, disables that, whatever. Okay. And then occlusion uh, cooling, if your object behind another object, it as well will be removed and not rendered. So if you have thousands and thousands of objects, it helps that way optimize stuff. But what happens if you have, let's say, this castle as one solid mesh? Because it's one solid mesh, it can't remove that. So for example, if even I would stand like that and I see only this wall, all your castle will be rendered. All your polygons will be rendered because it's a one static mesh. And why modular it's important? Because if I will click now on this, you see like, this is a part, right? So this whole wall, it's created from the parts, you see? So it means if I will now look on this wall, only this wall will be rendered and everything else will be disabled. Of course, sometimes, especially on the low end devices, you may notice that if you move really, really quickly, it sometimes lagging and not loading enough, uh, fast enough your meshes, and you may see like some like emptiness and then it's loads. So you need to keep an uh, eye on that. That happens if you have really on, on the screen uh, lots of these uh, meshes. Um, and if you're moving like really fast and you're telling your CPU you need to load really a lot of that really quickly, then it may struggle. So it, it depends on the device. But again, if you can see here all, all these parts, and even in Outliner, you can preview how many assets are there. It's a huge amount, right? You see, I can scroll and scroll and scroll, and we still have like a different. So first of all, it helps on optimization, right? On the rendering side, it helps a lot. Secondly, it helps with memory because look at this floor, right? It repeats. Instead of having each this floor as a as a one piece with many, many polygons, which in a first video I explained that more triangles, more memory usage will come, right? So you want as low triangles without, of course, sacrificing much your quality. And this is a pure example because now instead of all these tiles to be unique or one big floor, we have one this tile. See, this is one tile. And then it's duplicated, right? like that. So it's snapped. Why it's important? Because how memory works, it takes into account your first static mesh. And then if that static mesh 
it's already in the memory. It only then takes fraction of memory, just add additional stuff because each mesh is sharing same stuff, it's sharing same material, it's sharing um, all this similar stuff. But then, of course, there will be differences. First of all, location, because all these tiles, they are in a different locations, right? It could be rotation, scale, and again, some additional uh, differences. And that's why, like, these additional differences, they stored into memory as well for each a copy, but it's just a fraction of the memory usage comparing if each of the static meshes would be unique. So that's why modular, it's super, super efficient on memory side because we can save and same time we can keep um, optimization on the rendering side. And lastly, what it helps us, it's basically with texture size. Again, if that would be, this whole thing would be one static mesh. I can't even imagine how someone can texture that into this kind of quality, right? So look on this floor. Yes, it's stylized. It feels a little bit blurry, but it's a style. And they definitely could make it really super, super sharp if they would want to. And why? Because they just only need to texture this one tile. Yeah. So it's probably like five by five meters, even maybe smaller. And it's much easier than this whole thing, right? So when you texture it like that and when you duplicate it, and then when you're duplicating, it doesn't need to be always, again, follow um, same direction, um, same basically rotation or scale. And because, again, that will start to be uh, visible that it repeats. But you can duplicate it like that. So let's just grab it here and let's say you duplicate it like this and you see these patterns right like all these scratches and they start to be noticeable but nothing stops you put it like this right and you will start breaking all this um, visual tiling and then on top of that you can put this kind of like a crates or some decals which totally will remove all this visual re repetition so quality then can be much much higher with uh, that. And this is one of the main um, reasons why environment artists are using modular sets. Now, nobody working with, uh, let's say, building as a whole thing, because that's impossible to keep quality on the level, on the high level. And that's why, like, we always using this and reusing. So hopefully you will understand now why this is important and why you don't want to model a whole thing inside let's say blender or somewhere else but you can just like create modular pieces you can bring them here and then environment arts is like putting them together inside of ufn and you, this way you can even create many castles with a different designs because again you can just reuse this piece and i won't go into more details how to plan and design these modular pieces you can find tons and tons of uh, information and uh, on youtube tutorials how to do this and it's not so difficult i'm telling you and but yeah uh, this is the way proper way to do it and let's just to finalize this video let's just push this and i want to do memory calculation just to show you um, how this would work okay so it's updated let's jump back to on ufn and launch memory calculation that was pretty quick. Now, if you don't know, you can go to Windows, Message Log, and here, Memory Test. And in here, what's most important thing, it's basically you can see, let's say, this mess pillar, right? And you can see it says 57 um, instances. And this is a total of memory usage. And if that would be 57 totally unique assets, you would need to multiply each 57 of that by 200. You can imagine that that would be crazy. And we see that, you see, like, even one item grunter, it's around 400, right? And then you have uh, one modular piece, right? It's 260, it's one. And then 16 of this one copies, right? It's 261. So that's why, again, uh, modular 
and basically reusing assets. And it, it doesn't need to be like exactly from the modular pack. You, you, for example, if you want rock or if you want some um, flower, right, you can duplicate it many times and same rock, especially rocks, it's much easier because they look differently from all, ang all, all angles. So you can scale them, even sometimes non-uniformly a little bit, so they're not stretching too much. You can uh, rotate them, and they will every time look unique. So you can create many variations, right? Or you can combine them together. Like again, you can duplicate a few times and rotate them, and place in a formation like a group, and it will look again unique. But at the same time, you will just creating instances, and these copies they just a fraction. So they will use maybe like three, five, up to five, just on units instead of two hundreds, and uh, this is much much more efficient way to do it and for example in here you can see that a uh, wall is really dense like we have 500 copies of the wall piece and it's only 1700 like almost 1800 units right and comparing again imagine 500 walls like that would be crazy and inefficient and especially like on the rendering side so hopefully you understand how modular now all this works and how it's benefits on the optimization on the rendering side on the cpu side and especially on the memory side okay good luck have fun i would like to say thank you to my all supporters i appreciate your support thank you for your generosity you can join our growing discord community where we like to discuss ufn tips and tricks showcase our work and help each other you can find link in the description or in the channel header you can get project files on my patreon or just buy me a coffee to support me. If you're interested in learning more about UFN materials, coding, widget UI, and more, feel free to subscribe and click that bell icon to get notifications when new videos will be released. See you soon.